When it comes to buying a thin and light laptop for photo editing, graphic design, and video editing, it is hard to find one with the performance and build quality you need at a decent price point. Well, since Acer teamed up with Ryzen to give us the Acer Swift 3, they may have given us a budget-friendly creator laptop that can perform well for 1080p video editing, graphic design, and photography. Let's get rocking! <laughs> If you're new to the channel, my name is Benji Kaiser. This is where you're going to find the best tech and tools for creative professionals. If you're curious about the exact price of the Acer Swift 3, you can head down in the description below and click that link. Now, if you do make a purchase through that link, I will get a small commission, but at no extra cost to you. And that's what keeps this channel alive and the helpful content coming your way. Diving right into the build quality of this laptop, as I pull the Swift 3 out of the box, I'm greeted by an all aluminum chassis, keyboard deck, and side panels, making this laptop not only durable, but incredibly thin and light. Weighing in at just 2.65 pounds, at barely over half an inch thick at 0.63 inches, I'm quite impressed by the portability of this laptop. But how does a laptop this thin and light perform? Well, hold tight because later in the video, we are going to dive into some of the tests. But first, let's get into the on-the-go capability of this laptop. The Acer Swift 3 has a 48 watt hour battery that can accomplish 11 hours of web browsing battery life and about six to eight hours of design and video editing life. Now, I recently took a road trip and this laptop lasted me more than nine hours on the road using internet, having the screen at full brightness while going down the road trying to get some work done. So I know it will last at least nine hours and I still had about 20 to 30% battery left. So that's how I know we're gonna get that 11 hours during web browsing. The Acer Swift 3 comes with an ample selection of ports, and as I always discuss concerning the ports, make sure the ports are something that you will use on your day to day. You could have the latest and greatest. If you don't find them useful to you, then what is the point? So look at the ports, consider your daily workflow, and make sure they fit your needs. For such a thin and light laptop, the Acer Swift 3 has good ventilation, and we will discuss how this affects the cooling performance once we get into the benchmarks coming up later in this video. As I pull open the lid of this laptop, which does take two hands due to how thin and light it is, I can almost lift the entire laptop as I am opening the lid. Now, I don't mind this though, because I would rather have a strong closure and a thin and light laptop than a loose closure that opens too easily and becomes very floppy. The hinges are strong and secure, offering smooth open and close of the lid. What I like most about the hinge is that it is one long hinge that runs along nearly the entire bottom of the screen, making it very strong and durable with no screen flex. This is very reminiscent of the MacBook Pro, so really great build choice here on the Swift 3. This laptop does come with a 720p webcam, so you don't miss out on those crucial virtual meetings if the need arises. When looking at the screen, I'm greeted by slim bezels that are subtle, making this 16 by nine aspect ratio screen really stand out. I must say, I wish the screen was a little brighter. It reaches only 253 nits at full brightness, which if you are trying to work on projects in an outdoor seating area of a coffee shop in noonday sunlight, it may appear a little dim in that sort of contrast situation, but it is still a good brightness. It just isn't as bright as I would prefer. Concerning the screen capabilities, that is one way Acer has been able to save you some money. The screen can only reach 64% sRGB, 47% Adobe RGB, and 47% DCI P3. Now, although this laptop is not color accurate, it is a very solid price to performance machine, and you will see that as we get into the benchmarks in just a moment. If you want to turn this laptop into a color accurate workhorse, I recommend picking up a color accurate external monitor. This will not only boost your productivity with a second screen, but get you the color accuracy you need for your designs, edits, or photos. Acer has a budget friendly 100% sRGB and 96% Adobe RGB screen, the Concept D CM2. I will link it in the description below so you can check it out. Moving down to the keyboard deck, I'm really appreciating the spacious key placement and the large shift key on the right side of the keyboard. For some reason, a lot of thin and light laptops shrink their shift key and it always is a burr in my saddle. But not to worry, on this keyboard, Acer has kept the full shift key. As far as the key press is concerned, they have done a great job providing a quiet, smooth key press that is just the right amount of softness and snap when typing. 
Also, it is important to note that the keyboard is bright and visible while in a dark room. There is a clear, even lighting across all of the keycaps. Moving on to the trackpad, Acer has equipped it with Windows Modern Touch Gestures which work nicely, have a strong click and excellent touch sensitivity. To me, the trackpad is a very crucial component of a design laptop, and this one is up to the challenge. I will note that the trackpad is a little clicky for my taste. I prefer a quieter trackpad click, but it does not disturb the function. It is simply a personal preference of mine regarding how it sounds when clicked. So here is an audio sample for you to check out. If you're enjoying this video and getting some value, gently press down on that like button and let me know how you plan on using this laptop by dropping a comment below. If you want more content like this in the future, then make sure to subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss out on any of the future uploads. Okay, let's get back into the video. All right, now that we have covered the build quality and usability of this laptop, let's talk about the performance. The Acer Swift 3 I'm reviewing comes with the AMD Ryzen 7 4700U with eight cores and eight threads the AMD Radeon 7 graphics, eight gigs of DDR4 RAM, it is a two four gig setup, and 512 gigs of NVMe SSD. Starting off, I'm going to showcase the Geekbench 5 scores of this thin and light laptop to show you how easily it can keep up with some of the bigger boys in the high performance processor category. In the Geekbench 5 single core test, you can see that the Ryzen 7 4700U is beating out the 2019 15-inch MacBook Pro with its i7 9750H processor. It is also coming in just behind the latest MacBook Pro 16 while ranking in the 1100s with laptops like the Predator Helios 300, the Gigabyte Aero 15, and the MSI GF65. Not bad for such a small and affordable laptop. On the multi-core benchmark, the Swift 3 held its own again by coming in above the 15-inch MacBook Pro and just behind the same powerful laptops during the single-core performance test. I am thoroughly impressed by this laptop with the Ryzen 7 4700U processor. Getting into the design and photo editing benchmarks, I'm going to be using the Photoshop benchmark test from Puget Systems. As you can see, it handles the individual tasks very well. I use this Photoshop benchmark to see how well a laptop can handle the most intense tool in Adobe's design suite. If a laptop can perform well in Photoshop, it will handle InDesign and Illustrator with ease. As you can see, this laptop sits on the lower end of my laptop test results, but don't let that scare you away. Remember, this is a thin and light, ultra power conserving laptop that will give you performance and longevity during your creative tasks. So although it is sitting below some of the monster gaming laptops, it is no slouch in creator apps such as the Adobe Design Suite, Affinity Photo, Sketch, and more. Let me show you what I mean. Concerning multitasking, this laptop is able to run Photoshop, InDesign, and Illustrator simultaneously. I'm using roughly 7% of the CPU, 71% of the RAM, and only 8% of the integrated graphics. Now, as I start to conduct some work inside of InDesign, you can see that it will rise up to around 12%, but as soon as I step out of the app, it settles back down. So regarding multitasking, it can handle that very well. Okay, let's take things a step further and see if we can push this laptop to run some video edits. Unfortunately, I was unable to edit smooth 4K videos with this laptop. During 4K playback and scrubbing, it dropped 14,837 of the 16,177 frames, making the edit nearly impossible. So I'm deeming this a laptop that is suitable for 1080p video editing. For the playback scrubbing test in Premiere Pro, I will take a nine minute 1080p project with 16,177 frames, with 7,240 of those frames being motion design, and I will play it back at full half and fourth quality. At full quality, we saw 1,557 out of the 16,177 frames dropped. At half quality, we saw 171 frames dropped. And at fourth quality, we saw 113 frames dropped. The playback at full quality was definitely usable. And at half or fourth quality, I didn't even notice the dropped frames. Now, I will note that I was only running Premiere Pro during that test. So if you have more tasks open while editing, you may get more dropped frames but you can either close out your other tasks or go down to fourth quality to keep the smoothness of your edit. Now to render out the 7,240 motion design frames in that project, it took eight minutes and four seconds. Now let's test out the export times. I'm going to take the same nine minute 1080p clip, place it into Premiere Pro and DaVinci Resolve and export it out at 1080p YouTube settings. 
Now, for DaVinci Resolve, I am using the free version, just so you know how to gauge these test results. For the Premiere Pro 1080p to 1080p export, it took 2 minutes and 32 seconds. And for the DaVinci Resolve 1080p to 1080p export, it took 5 minutes and 23 seconds. Do note that for these tests, all of the previous laptops you can see on this chart were exporting a 4K clip to 1080p. So the Swift 3 does have a slight advantage here, but I did not want to leave out the comparisons as to remove all context from what this laptop is capable of. Now, what about the noise, thermals, and component usage while using this laptop? The Acer Swift 3 at idle has no fan. Now, while web browsing, it occasionally kicked on to about 51 decibels. During the Photoshop benchmark, it was at 48 decibels. For the Premiere Pro 1080p to 1080p export, it hit 45 decibels. And for the DaVinci Resolve 1080p to 1080p export, it hit 45 decibels as well. And regarding the thermals, I was quite pleased at how cool this laptop remained during the variety of benchmarks I conducted. You can check those out right here. And regarding the component usage for the test conducted, you can see those here. If you're looking for a thin and light laptop that runs the Adobe Design Suite without a hitch, can conduct 1080p video edits in Premiere Pro and DaVinci Resolve, has great single core and multi-core performance, gets an incredible 11 hours of battery life while web browsing, and around 6 to 8 hours of design and video editing battery life, while also coming in a thin and light all aluminum package, then my goodness, you need to pick up the Acer Swift 3. If you're curious about the exact price or you're ready to make a purchase, you can head down in the description below and click that link. Now, if you do make a purchase, it will get a small commission, but at no extra cost to you. And that's what keeps this channel alive and the helpful content coming your way. If you wanna learn more about the Acer Swift 3 or you're curious about other videos on the channel, you can click or tap the screen over here. Otherwise, keep editing, keep designing, keep creating. I'm Benji Kaiser, and I'll see you here in the next video.